Hello. Just get it out of the way. Somebody got a haircut. I know, I know. You better go back to Supercuts and get your nine ninety nine back. <laughs> well, joke's on you, bitches. I did this. I did. Just a black man trying to save money wherever he possibly can. And this is one of the areas where I choose to. And furthermore, for those of you that are going to sit there and opine about my hairline, let's look at this hairline for just a second. Sometimes the lighting that I have set up makes it look like it's farther back than it is. See, unlike LeBron James, I don't need hair plugs to look like I still have a relatively full head of hair. And while, yes, I don't have the same hairline as I did when I was a high school senior all the way back in 1999, I guarantee you, in a couple of years, when I go to my 20-year class reunion, I will have one of the fullest head of hairs and one of the most forward hairlines out of the entire graduating class. And for most of you that comment and opine on this, pray you have my hairline when you're 35. Pray you do. Hell, pray you do when you're 30. And in some of your cases, pray when you're 25 that you've got this much hair. And pray, above all else, that when you get to my age, you have the option and the choice, the choice to shave your head. That you have the hair to do this. That Mother Nature doesn't already start the job for you and you just got to finish it fucking off. See, I get the choice. And for those of you that don't get the choice, ha, 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 it sucks to be you. For those of you that are wondering where the hell I've been, well, you know, in the past couple of weeks, I've been so involved in the NFL draft. I did a ton of videos for that. Still got a few more to do. I got to the point where I was like, eh, tired of doing videos. And then from a wrestling standpoint, I had nothing that really interested me. So I decided to take a little time off. There you go. But I'm back. Got to play some catch-up now, and catch-up we will. You'll get some videos out of me this month. For those of you that are worried about me stopping to do videos, believe me, if there was ever a point in time where I was going to stop doing wrestling-related videos, you would know it because more likely than not, I would be going down swinging, period. Burials and shade thrown all over the fucking place. Well, let's talk about payback, and if any show to me kind of crystallizes and epitomizes my general feelings of apathy and malaise uh, and indifference overall to this product now. It's a show. I didn't even watch it live Sunday night. I forgot it was even that Sunday. You know, and think about it. It's taken me over a week to even come back and want to review the goddamn thing. If that doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what the hell does. I just don't care. And sometimes over the past five plus years of doing wrestling related videos, you know, there have been times where the product has been really, really bad. And it's inspired me to do more videos. It got me more interested in doing videos. It's not really the case this time. I think it's kind of a fatigue standpoint of the sense of I'm kind of tired of talking about the bad. And I'm kind of tired of talking about stupid things. And it gets old after a while. And in some cases, I get tired of repeating the same old freaking talking points that, you know, for some people, it's going to be like, hey, man, he says it once again. And for others, it's going to be like, hey, you're wrong. I'm going to hit you with my flaming keyboard fingers at fire. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, so payback. You know, I, I saw after the show, when I finally watched it Monday night and then when I finally finished it up Tuesday morning, a lot of people on Twitter talk about how this was a good show and this was a solid show. And I should have had, I think I had a feeling that was coming, but I don't agree with the assessment. To me, this show once again proved just how much the WWE by and large is a waste of time. So you can take all your flips and kicks and false finishes and no selling and high spots and shove them down your throat and pound them straight up your fucking ass. I don't like when a company makes me feel like every single week, every single month, they don't value my time as a fan, as a consumer. They don't give a fuck. If they don't give a fuck, why should they? Since the WWE clearly didn't give a fuck when it came to this show on so many different levels, I don't give a fuck if I bury this fucking show. Well, let's talk about the pre-show and the epitome of stupidity. If Roman Reigns is going to be your top guy, and be that what it may, if you're going to put everything into the Reigns basket for the next one to two years, whether you should or not, doesn't matter. That's where they are right now. If you're going to do that, then you would think in theory that you would be smart enough to recognize that one of the ways to help validate him as a top guy and make him into potentially a money draw for you, which he clearly is not at this point in time, even from a real merchandise standpoint, is to build up quality opponents. Give them really good dance partners. You know, Stone Cold Steve Austin is nothing 
without guys like Vince McMahon and The Rock, and vice versa. Hulk Hogan needed dance partners like Andre the Giant, The Million Dollar Man, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Ultimate Warrior, King Kong Bundy, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, Roddy Ripper. He needed those dance partners. You gotta have those dudes. And right now, something that is clearly evident is that Roman Reigns lacks quality dance partners for the top. So here we go, kickoff show. You got two guys that should be being built up into future opponents for Roman Reigns in the next one to two years. And instead we're jobbing them both the fuck out. Jesus Christ, we've got Dolph Ziggler beating Baron Corbin. Who the fuck cares about Dolph Ziggler? You just had Baron Corbin win the Battle Royal at WrestleMania. This is your chance to build the lone wolf. You need to get him something. You need to do something with him. Not job him out to fucking Darlene Ziggler, the next fucking Jenner family member, to announce his transition to his real gender identity. One, two, three, fuck Dolph Ziggler. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? You got Baron Corbin, who screams future Roman Reigns opponent, and you're jobbing him out to this mid-card for life bitch in Dolph Ziggler. How stupid. And then you've got Callisto defeating Ryback once again, successfully defending his U.S. title once again on the pre-show once again, so that way dumb dicks like Road Dog can come on the internet and talk about how it's a good thing that Callisto's defending his belt on the pre-show. Holy Christ! I don't know what drugs they're slipping into the people's drinks in Titan Towers, but they cannot possibly be this fucking stupid. This is almost like North Korean Kim Jong-un propaganda level ridiculous. No! You've got one of your mid-card champions once again on the pre-show. You are not giving people a reason to give a fuck about a guy. And then Ryback, who frankly can blame him for not wanting to fucking be there. Who can't fucking blame him? Who's going to fucking blame him for not wanting to be around? This guy should have been in the main event at some point in time. They do a dumb dick character turn, which of course, as pathetically predictable a pattern as it always is in the WWE, meant absolutely nothing. There was no plan, no vision, no direction for it whatsoever. Just so that way, what, he could come out and job twice to fucking Callisto on the pre-show on two straight fucking pay-per-views? Ryback screams out, future Roman Reigns opponent. And instead, you're jobbing him out to an even bigger, littler midget, or whatever the fucking Callisto. All the while, somebody you haven't given the people a lot of reasons to care the fuck about. You want to make him the new Rey Mysterio, they give people a reason to give a fuck about him like he is the new Rey Mysterio. And the first most important thing you could do is actually feature him on the main pay-per-view show. Ridiculous. And then we get to the main card. You got the number one contender's tag title, or... Yeah, tag match, whatever. Fucking Vaude Villains and uh, Amore and Cassidy. And it's fucked up what happened with Amore and the goddamn concussion. To me, it's kind of like a stupid spot. That's what I saw. I saw a stupid spot that was unnecessary. It just served no point, just like so many things serve no point. And it's unfortunate because you're clearly building up uh, to Big Cass and Enzo Amore facing off against the New Day. And now you're going to go with the VOD villains. And it's just like, hmm. The only interesting thing about this is because of the fact of Enzo Amore and Big Cass being in the match, the VOD villains were actually getting some heel heat. And they probably could continue to sustain that. Because now they're going to associate them with injuring Enzo Amore. They're going to associate them with not being the New Day. They're going to associate them with, not, frankly, not being very entertaining. So as a result, they're probably going to get some nice incidental, accidental heel heat out of this. But it was sucks. This is the way you kick off the show. Of course, a lot of people are going to fire right back and say, Oh, I might just save you with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Kevin Owens did what he could to save it. Look, the bottom fucking line is is I have seen Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens wrestle enough over the years. If I wanted to see Kevin Steen and El Generico wrestle again, I'd go watch some fucking Art or H DVDs from 2010. I'd go watch some PWG crap. I don't want to watch that shit. I've already watched it before. Six years later, I don't need to fucking still be watching it. The matches aren't that fucking good. I don't know why so many people think Sami Zayn is so spectacular. This dude has no charisma, no personality, whatsoever. 
I can at least see why people get behind Kevin Owens. He can do cool things in the ring. In theory, he looks a little different, but not as different as you might think because a lot of other people in the business don't fucking work out. But at least he has a personality. He can actually cut a decent promo. He can do a good interview. He can do so many other things that Sami Zayn can't. Just, you know, the one thing that I've been good about this match is that it was fucking over. And Kevin Owens wins, and I'm like, finally, can move fucking on. But of course, it just can't be like that. Because the nerds can't get enough, and frankly, it seems like the WWE can't get enough of Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Again, when we're talking about building up people to potentially face Roman Reigns down the road, which should be a primary eminent focus of you, is who are we going to have Reigns face at SummerSlam, at Survivor Series, and the Royal Rumble, or WrestleMania 33, and next year's SummerSlam, and next year's Survivor Series, you know, United Champions, all these different shows. You've got Kevin Owens wasting his fucking time spinning his wheels with this bland-ass, boring, undercard-for-the-life WWE guy and Sami Zayn, so that way he can win, and then immediately worry about the IC title. No! And it's like... The Miz versus Cesaro, you, you had to know that the Miz was going to go over here somehow, some way, especially with Maurice being involved. You know, it's a shame because, you know, it's like the emphasis is going to be on Miz only because of Maurice, when actually Miz kind of deserves the attention for himself because he's good enough as a heel on his own. He's one of the few guys that's actually really fucking good at his job and what he's supposed to do. He actually gets the right type of reaction. And if anything, he's got another built-in heater with Maurice because a lot of dudes are just going to be pissed at him because they don't understand how he got Maurice and they didn't. It. It's called chocolate cake, marijuana, cocaine. Buy her some of that. You'll probably have her giving you the French tickler, not the Pat Patterson version all night long. But then this whole thing, it becomes a big schmoz. And, uh, you know, what could have, I thought, been a really, really good IC title match between Miz and Cesaro. And at the interest, I guess, to a degree of Kevin Owens, I thought Kevin Owens was very good on this night. It's just, again, I've seen enough of Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. And no, their matches aren't that fucking good. It's all a bunch of flips and kicks and no selling in high spots and false finishes. That tells absolutely no story. That is not good, compelling wrestling. You're not wrestling in front of 25 people anymore. You're wrestling in the big leagues. How about we start fucking acting like it? But then we get Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. And surely a lot of people think that this match was great. I didn't. I thought it was average at best. I mean, I like Jericho kind of in the heel role. It kind of works, especially if he's going against Ambrose. You know, you, you put Ambrose up against Jericho. It gives reason to people to get behind Jericho, hating him, that is, and get behind Ambrose some more. But Ambrose has got to get better in the ring, man. This match was choppy. There were numerous moments where I sat there and I'm like, do these guys know what they're going to do next? You know, it was just, to me, kind of choppy. And just another example of how, you know, for all the shit people give Roman Reigns or certain other people, you know, sometimes look within at some of your favorites too. Ambrose ain't ready for a main event spot because, frankly, he can't deliver a main event quality match. This match should have been a whole lot, hell of a lot better than what it actually was. But speaking of things that could have been a whole lot better than they actually were, the women's championship match with Natalia and Charlotte. You just had that sense that something was going to be squirrely here if Brett was going to be there. It was good to see Brett. Looked all right. Happy for him. Hopefully the cancer's in remission. Da, 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 da. Good luck, Hitman. And then we get to this match. I mean, it's nice that they give these girls a lot of time. But something, again, when we talk about sometimes it seems like with some of these girls that just recently came up from NXT, it's a lot of choppiness and intermittent stuff. And there's sometimes not a lot of flow to the action. And, you know, I'm somebody that likes cohesiveness and flow to the match. It's a lot of, at times, choppiness, uh, less than stellar execution. But ultimately, the match was working until the finish. It's bad enough that wrestling fans live in the past. We don't need the WWE living in the past. That was RIP almost 20 fucking years ago! You'd expect TNA to do this dumb shit. They did this dumb shit a few years ago with fucking an angle title match. You'd understand why TNA did it, because they were dumb. 
They at least had Earl Hebner, so they had an important key cog here. Oh, we got Little Nate Networks. What a fucking joke. So this is why you just had to have Charlotte retain at WrestleMania instead of having Sh Sasha Banks win, or fucking A, even Becky Lynch winning, was to get here to payback and come up with this match at Natalia, waste everybody's fucking time to give us that fucking finish just so that way we can see Bret Hart put Rick in a sharpshooter. Who the fuck wants to see that? What a colossal waste of time. And speaking of a colossal waste of time, this whole Vince and Stephanie and Shane segment. You know, you had a feeling that something stupid was going to come out of this, that something that was ultimately going to crystallize just how much this whole angle of Shane McMahon returning has been one colossal waste of time. And furthermore, for the record, anybody that's been sitting there and doing these articles and talking about these things, how Shane McMahon has brought change to Raw and it's better with him on the show, what the fuck are you talking about? You clearly haven't been watching. What the fuck is any different? Piss poor character development, lack of cohesiveness in storytelling, so many things that make no goddamn sense, and ultimately everything feels like a fucking waste of time. That's what it's been largely the past couple of years. It's no different now. And the whole premise of Shane McMahon being there, frankly, is stupid, because wasn't the whole concept of him and Taker at WrestleMania was that if Shane lost, he was gone, just so that way you build up to this match, make it seem like it's something, and then it ends up being nothing, because then you just let Shane run it for a few weeks so Stephanie could come back, and now she's trying to play both sides of the fucking fence, and now we've got both of them running raw together. You wasted all that time, months, you wasted everything with Shane McMahon just to get to this point where he was going to stick around and it's going to be him and Stephanie on the air together. That's what's so bad about the WWE now, is at least, if anything else, the shit that used to involve Vince directly or indirectly used to generally get pretty well taken care of. They used to book it relatively well. If you remember at one point in time, they were pushing Hornswoggle more than 95% of the roster, and frankly, at one point in time, Hornswoggle was more over than 90-95% to of the roster. But they can't even take care of a Vince McMahon angle right now. That's how bad this has gotten. This is so dumb. Such a colossal waste of time. And such a big smack in the face to every fucking buddy, in my opinion. Most certainly was to me. Why should I care about anything when you're just going to make up the rules later? Why would the fuck would I care about anything that happens? Because clearly they don't. And then we get to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I don't think anybody actually believed, did they, that this was going to involve a title change. That was surprising, too. No title changes on this show. You know, the premise of payback is that some people might actually get payback, you would think. But Kalisto beat Ryback again, and that's not really payback. Maybe Dolph Ziggler beating Baron Corbin would be payback. But Kevin Owens beating Sami Zayn's not payback. Miz beating Cesaro's not payback. You know, maybe Ambrose beating Jerry. I just, you get where I'm going with this. The theme of the show is one thing, and the show goes in an entirely different direction. But with that said... I was looking forward to see how this would work with Roman Reigns and AJ Styles, and I thought these guys were really good. I thought this match was really good. It felt like it actually belonged on the main event of a pay-per-view. For everybody that's so quick to just crap on Roman Reigns and prune on Roman Reigns, there were a lot of people that really liked this match. And sure, you can try and give all the credit in the world to AJ Styles and this and that, but he's got to have a dance partner. Roman Reigns had to make something go. He had to make something work. I thought these two guys had relatively good chemistry and did a pretty good job in a featured spot here. I thought AJ established himself as a type of performer you would expect him to be throughout the history of his career. And I thought Roman Reigns did a good job of going out there and being better than, frankly, a lot of people will give him credit for or will ever want to give him credit for because of certain preconceived notions. But with that said... I really wish this would have just been a one-on-one -on -one match. Just let it be, let it be. And maybe, you know, one of the two finishes you did where AJ uh, wins via counter or wins via DQ, um, maybe you let that stand. Because instead, it becomes about the Bullet Club. Instead, it becomes about fucking Stephanie and Shane. It becomes about everything other than what it should be, which is AJ Styles and Roman Reigns, and in particular Roman Reigns, if he's supposed to be your top guy. I'm sorry. All these people are excited about the fucking Bullet Club. What the fuck is there being to be excited about? Two bald jobbers. Seriously. Helping emo AJ. 
I, I don't get it. But I didn't like how the emphasis was put on so many different areas other than the actual champion and the number one contender, the challenger. And then at the end of all this, the way that they close us out after Roman Reigns wins is you cut backstage and the emphasis is not, is not on Roman Reigns. It's not on AJ Styles. It's on Stephanie, it's on Shane, and talking about it, Extreme Rules in a few weeks, I think it is, they're going to fucking have a goddamn whatever the fuck match. Extreme Rules match, whatever the fuck. You're not even waiting till the next ride on Raw to announce this. You just basically swept this match under the rug like it didn't fucking matter. And that's the fact of the matter is, at this point in time, none of this shit matters. It is a colossal waste of time. You could take your new era that you idiots have been talking about now, several times over the past few years, and you can pound it up your fucking ass. You can stick it in your pipe and fucking smoke it. Because ding dong, dumb dicks, there ain't nothing different. The blue is the blue fucks are people thinking. This shit is bad. This is really bad. A lot of these so-called top performers have serious flaws, whether it be their actual work in the ring and or personality, ability to connect with the audience in a real meaningful way, the lack of storytelling is egregious, the lack of attention to detail even more so, and the way the WWE so flippantly just changes things on a dime, basically insulting your intelligence and expecting you to just eat shit and like the taste of it absolutely makes me sick to my stop. It can be so much better. It doesn't really have to be that hard. And it shouldn't be that hard. The WWE, though, seems to be determined to make it as incredibly difficult as they possibly can. And based off of this night, they did a bang-up fucking job.